people like them. For never have you seen any? Uh, so well, I, I know they have like a three month backlog. <laughs> right, jeez. Yeah. It's, it's cheaper than that. I realized the prices fluctuate a lot because I was looking at one. I had one model and it was like probably, I think they wanted like 20 bucks for it. And the next month they wanted 80 or like 100 almost for the same yeah, yeah, backlog. Because right. they, the, right. they use a lot of uh, vendors. So, if, right. like, so, like, I know for like the ceramic, they're having problems with the vendors. So yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, they don't always. It's not always happening right there. Yeah. There's actually a guy, a guy that's just shooting straight clay without any of the powder or anything. Like it's just you know, sticking straight in the kiln, like doing full bases. And I saw that. Do you know that. somebody? Do you I don't know him personally, but he's yeah. they did like a base and droop notes on the side. Yeah, yeah. There's loops and stuffing outside the base. I don't know. All made of clay. It's, it's, cool. it's some really cool stuff. So. Very cool. Uh, my name's Swami. I've been in the 3D since 3D Studio DOS 2 in 93, and uh, Jim and I go way back almost till then. Uh, started a users group here in Orlando called Computer Animators Plus that went for a little over a couple years and uh, got kind of exposure. Beat the Catch 22. People thought I was the guy because I was running this thing and ended up doing a lot of 3D and had a long career in all aspects of modeling, rendering, uh, animating writing about it, uh, custom software, Mac script, uh, teaching, all things 3D. <clears throat> I got really into it. Some other things happened, I, I drifted away, and then the 3D printing thing started to come up, and uh, Jim got his uh, MakerBot, and uh, had him out at a math group meeting that I have. In fact, our monthly meeting is tomorrow. I have cards and stuff. It's at uh, Stardust at uh, 7 to 10. Um, so that'll be cool. And I did bring something to share. And there's kind of a game, fun sort of thing. I'll pass it around. Oh, yeah. So actually, this was printed on Jim's printer uh, very early on when he got it. And I won't say too much about it because this is part of the game. So here's the object. And I'm going to pass it around. And the game, uh, is, there's no right or wrong necessarily, is to say anything you can about the object, whether how obvious it is or how obscure you think it is. <laughs> just say something about it and pass it to the next guy. That's symmetrical. Symmetrical. Okay, that's a good one. That's a good start. It's not that symmetrical. <laughs> he doesn't see it wrong. being that symmetrical. <laughs> so, I mean, it is in certain, certain, certain angles, but not at others. All right. It has something about angles, looking at it from different angles. It doesn't look the same. I know what it is, and when I first got yeah, my yeah, 3D printer... To, anybody who knows what it is, they can keep... Yeah. Uh, when I first got my 3D printer, I thought this was the coolest thing. Yeah. I never actually printed it, though. So just... mm. uh, it could be a, uh, used like a, for a helmet. Maybe first. It looks kind of like that helmet thingy. That's all right. And see, Dan, what do you think of it? Um, it's like its rings are sort of scale of multiples of each other, size-wise. Yep, there's some size change going on, scaling going on there. Symmetry, size changes, helmet. <laughs> you can get all, anything. Get all, anything, yeah, whatever it comes to your mind. Some people are very artsy, okay. some people are very technical. Kind of people see different things. Yeah, they know. I've, some I've people see that. different things in it, which is... See, I think early prototype deaths are... I had a photographer was really into it. Um, it's white. It's white? That, that, that's a good one. I'm going to make a little room here while you guys are doing that, because like, there will be a... There's a second part. An ending part to this deal. That's probably going to be enough room right in there. Yeah. All right, TJ, what do you what do you got for us? I was thinking seen it. originally there was a baseball that hit the wicked hard. So <laughs> base, it's got a baseball <laughs> shape. That, that's that's. You got to the conversation on me though. I like the I like the helmet. <laughs> he likes the helmet idea. So okay. I don't know if you said the helmet. Uh, that was high rope. All right, Fernando, anything? You got anything for us that you haven't seen it before? Yeah, it's like Death Star, too. Death Star, he likes Death Star. Okay. We'll Maybe get a helmet for one of your guys. We'll get to the fun. I know, right? All right, now, um, if we can have the lights off. Somebody's anticipated me yeah. here. <laughs> All right, so here's the fun. So first, we're going to come like this. Okay, so we got some action here, right? Now, this is going to be the fun. We'll get it in place. All right, you can come in and out, right? Now, if I hit the magic spot, uh, Whoa. it's a waffle. 
<laughs> so, so now we have uh, pretty much a perfect grid. The little pieces broke off on the ends. But so these curves, these four curves at the top are actually square. It's a square. They are the outside of it. And so, and you can just shift like a seance, but other than that. Yeah. <laughs> so, so what we have here, um, what you guys were doing was a sort of math test. I'm, like I said, my group called the wing circle. I'm really into the math. So what it is technically is a projection from the sphere to the plane. It's called a stereographic projection. And this uh, flashlight represents straight line rays that hit somewhere on the sphere and they project until they hit the plane. And the size difference that you were noting, they're smaller up here because they travel further and they grow bigger. Mm -hmm. But they have to start off bigger because they don't go as far. Yeah. Um, so I've used this yeah, and get, awesome. that, get that gee whiz when you see the perfect square come out. And it could be any pattern, you can project anything. This just happened to be a you square. Need to build them a few mounts, you know, so you can put the flashlight Oh, yeah, yeah. Positions yeah. And, uh, so, so what the beauty of this is, and I've done this with many people, and I try to find not non-math people, and they're very, uh, they like this perspective because they usually don't think they're any good at math. So math is not numbers, necessarily or solely. It's not angles. It's not trigonometric functions. It's pattern, order, and relations. And so, when you're using just your observation. You're actually doing the found the essence of mathematics. The thing that actually is interesting to me and to other math people is this um, exploration, discovery, creativity, imagination. Um, those are all the things that are really that should I think be shared and not just cranking numbers. Because if you do that in grade school and you can't do it well, you say, well, "I'm no good at math." Right. But that's not math. That's calculation. That's a mechanical thing. The thinking and seeing the pattern, the order, and the relations is really the thing that, that is math at its foundation. So very there cool. you have it, the stereographic projection from a sphere to a plane. Yeah. Yeah. Do you sell that? Pardon me? Do you sell that? That's um, you sure. can get it, download it for free. Yeah, it's on uh, Thingiverse. Yep. It's on Thingiverse. Uh, on yeah. Thingiverse and on yeah. Shapeways. Yeah, I was going to say, it'd be a um, great one to... <laughs> in fact, I, I found a program... <clears throat> that allows you to take any two-dimensional image uh, within, oh within resolution constraints and project it onto the sphere. So you could have the name of your company, you could have a mountainscape scene, you could have a whatever you want. I think it's only like a 200 by 200 pixel kind of image because you have some resolution constraints and whatnot. Um, but anyhow, that, that's the deal. And if anybody wants to... Um, so you could make it into the, something that fit on the end, just fits on the end of the flashlight. Sure. It, it could be like a, a, a manufactured thing. Yeah. And, and you could just, just put the different things on the it end of the flashlight. It could be a lamp. Yeah. And then or shine it on a wall or pieces, something. Like right, and it could, it could be, you know, a, a, an outline of your kids or something, you know, a silhouette or something. It could and, and be all Rudolph, kinds. Rudolph's uh, Red, Red Nose, Nose Reindeer's and, cover. And what I'd really like to do, <laughs> as, a, as a side note, is make it into an animated shadow casting thing by putting a second sphere inside it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you've ever seen the two-dimensional version, you take a mask of slits and you put it over an image. Then you move it over and you get another frame of the animation. And you move it over and you move it over and you move it over. And now when you put the things across each other, it only lets one of them come through at a time. That's the essence of it. I'm thinking three-dimensionally the same idea. Yeah. So one sphere would spin in the other side the other one, and there would be this masking and this interacting thing going on, casting a, a, an animated shadow kind of thing. Yeah. I have the so. idea in a print, where somebody just printed two spheres that they don't have it in the pool of a pattern. They just did the one within the Sphere other. in a sphere. Oh, is it? Yeah, it is there. People will love this. They're just always like, well, you know, that's the thing. Uh, um, so traditional manufacturing is uh, subtracted. You're milling out, you're lathing away, you're taking stuff away. And this is kind of the opposite. You're doing additive. But also it allows you to create certain objects that would be very difficult or impossible in the subtractive way. And these uh, things within things, if you're um, on the meetup, I can post some stuff or some links. 
There's a great one where they made a dress, a woman's dress, out of triangles that were hinged. Now, if you have a dress that's going to be any kind of length, it's not going to fit into the volume of current printers. So what they did was they did a physics simulation and let the dress fall and collapse into a clump. And they wow. sent that to the 3D printer. Wow, and it oh, printed wow. it all it clumped up inside there. And then they take it out. And, then, <laughs> and the parametric thing where if, if you go on some of, there's a That's company wild. called, um, uh, what's that? Like, there's one that does a lot of good parametric stuff. So you could, where you wanted it to be more curved, you just paint on there and you get tighter triangles. And over here you get bigger triangles. So you can get it to drape on the body differently. Oh, yeah. uh, Kinematics is the company. Amazing yeah, stuff. I think they also do one where they algorithmically grow a leaf vein structure. It's called veination. And each one is unique. And um, nature uses hormones for growth and growth uh, directions and stuff. So they model this in the program, and it grows a lamp that is this amazing veined object. And then the shadows that it cast are really just phenomenal. That is cool. some really cool. I like very experimental and out there kind of uses of the technology, and there's plenty of it out there in clothing and uh, furniture and lamps and uh, mathematics. And in fact, when Jim was uh, presenting at the, at the meeting, it was largely 3D printed math, things that you print that are about the math. Yeah. Now we did look also at the math of how does it do the slicing and some of those other things. But there are a lot of, there are a few uh, geometers and people who are using 3D printers to uh, make math tangible, to show four-dimensional, five-dimensional, six higher-dimensional objects, their shadows. Because you remember in grade school you would do a box and a box and connect them and it looked like a 3D box? Yeah. Well, you can take a cube inside a cube and connect the vertices and you have a, a hypercube or a tesseract. Yeah. That is basically a shadow from the fourth dimension. So you can really bring these abstract mathematical ideas to a much more understandable kind of way that people get a better feel for. Mm -hmm. And that, that's kind of what I'm about outside of 3D printing. Mm -hmm. Presenting a perspective of math that gives a, an appreciation and a view that people didn't have before. I'm, I'm intrigued by uh, trigonometry in that sense. I want to I want to present trigonometry in an understandable way, and that's based on a circle. You know, it's like the, the, the pedal on a bicycle. It, it goes around, but if you trace the pattern of it, it's, it's, a, it's a sine curve. Mm -hmm. And the, the formulae, the, the sines, right. cosines, and tangents are all very understandable if you see them graphically. I would suggest you look in, your, if you haven't already, GeoGebra. GeoGebra is a great uh, program, free, uh, that allows you to do that kind of stuff. And there's a guy out of Australia named uh, Forrester. Paul, I think, amazing the way he presents things, and I, I can send you some links. And he does, he did a thing with um, the Fibonacci spiral, uh -huh. and explored it in such a way to show the relationships that were just so creative and insightful, um, a way to look at it that I hadn't seen before. He played with it, because he, he found a way in GeoGebra to create certain unit kind of things, and then he was able to use that as a chunk that would allow him to see what was required in order to make this kind of spiral. So he has a very playful element to uh, exploring what, what the math is and, and the trigonometry and stuff. It sounds exactly like the kind of thing you would like to see. I'm going to let these guys go real quick. Hey guys, I think so, you guys are the final.